Tonight's Thursday evening, and it's been a very exhausting two days. It's hard to believe that we're only half done, and yet we've all had a lot of opportunities to see a lot of amazing presentations. Um, and it's just too bad we can't see it all. I mean, it's, it's really a shame. And it's, on the other hand, it, it's been great to have so many talented people come here and share all their knowledge. Tonight is kind of, I guess, uh, one of the highlights of the week. Uh, we, uh, I don't know, has it been six years now that the FBA has chosen since the death of founder John Chappelle to uh, honor his memory and, and the founding of the MPA by having a special lecture named in his honor. And, and in that tradition, we, I guess we want to set apart one paper, one lecture as kind of being the special one, the one that we all want to pay attention to, and so this is it. And uh, before, as just a little preamble to that, um, I've asked Rick Jess to come in up and say uh, for a few minutes a, a little bit about John Chappelle and something about the founding of the NPA. For those of you that are kind of new to it, this will be a chance to learn a little bit of our heritage as the NPA. So Rick Jess, come up for a few minutes. Thank you, Greg. Hi, my name is Rick Jesh. And I've been asked to talk a little bit about the early days of NPA and what I remember of the times when it was formed under John Chappelle's leadership in the early 90s. As I look around, I see some of you here today who were there in those early days. <laughs> and uh, it's wonderful to see you guys here. It's even more exciting to see all the new people, all the new ideas that are coming. In 1992, my good friend Lee Coe asked me to go with him to Santa Barbara to the 78th Annual Convention of AAAS. I wasn't a member, and so I, I thought, gee, I, I haven't ever been to one of those, and it costs money. But he said, that's all right, I'm a member. Just stick with me. <laughs> and uh, that has taken me a long way. Uh, he also requested that I videotape his, uh, his presentation, and I videotaped some of the other ones, and I'm so glad I did because I, I still have it. And uh, David actually put one of those early tapes on, and we have uh, remembrance of John Chappelle through uh, a great uh, presentation he did. Francisco was probably there, I think Ron was there. Uh, at that time, uh, my friend Lee Cove had arranged under the AAAS uh, uh, auspicious to have an, a debate with a man named Lewis Carroll Epstein uh, about the validity of Einstein's special relativity. Uh, and that's where I met John Chappelle. Uh, John clearly pointed out the parts of special relativity that didn't make any sense. He went on to reveal that many, himself included, had been, shall we say, pushed back because of uh, establishment practices that didn't accept those kinds of offbeat ideas. I think those days are behind us. <laughs> uh, I don't consider my friend a scientist, uh, but my friend Lee, uh, pointed out something that I had not allowed myself to think. Um, I said to him, I don't really understand all that relativity stuff. <laughs> you know, like how twins would be a different age if one went on a trip and came back. And he said something to me like, that's good. It means you haven't accepted all the rubbish that uh, <laughs> might pass as logic. Those weren't his exact words. I, I couldn't think of those. Yeah. That. Paraphrase. Uh, I felt like a huge weight had been lifted from my shoulders, and I was allowed to think the thoughts that you should think. He changed my way of thinking about natural philosophy. Uh, I can't remember when I had heard, heard this quote before, but you probably have too. If quantum mechanics makes sense, then you don't really understand it. <laughs> if it's fine, then I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, in 1994, I went to another conference in San Francisco, and that is the conference where I say the Natural Philosophy Alliance emerged as, a, as an organization. Uh, people were walking out from the presentations just like we did this afternoon, and we thought, wow, well, that was a great 
and brought out a lot of great topics. People were excited. It was magical. And uh, someone, I think it was George Ture, said, you know, we're, we're good enough. We should have an organization of our own. And then the next thing was, well, sure, what shall we call it? And one of the few people there came up with Natural Philosophy Alliance, or it came up with a, a couple of months. And that was what I called first conference. John Chappelle admitted that it was a good time to do that, and the NPA was born. He did most of the organizing and coordinating, but was soon helped by a lot of good people. But I, I cannot stress the amount of work and determination that John put into those early days. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of work, and he was very dedicated to it. And he had a regular job, like most of us do. Um, and thanks to all those people who did all that work in the early days, we are blessed with the organization we have now. And I cannot stress too much the work that David is doing and Greg is doing, because this uh, whole organization, uh, I, I saw it spring to life a few years ago. <laughs> and I'm quite amazed and I'm so honored to be here. I'm, I'm not fit to untie the sandals of most of you guys. <laughs> John had a few principles that he went by, and they're just a few, but they're very important. And if you knew him, he, you knew that he lived by these principles. First was tolerance. Listen to others. Don't let your preconceptions get in the way of understanding. And another main one, logic. Try to avoid contradictions. So in conclusion, I would just like to say thank you all of you for listening, being tolerant, and helping each other. Thank you, Rick. I hope you enjoyed a little tour down memory lane. And uh, I would like now to introduce uh, someone I just met a year ago at a conference for the first time. And I've been delighted to get to know him. I, I told him the first time I saw him that you sound exactly like Desi Arnaz. And he said, who's Desi Arnaz? <laughs> 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 but anyway, uh, I, I'm just I, I'm so uh, appreciative of the experimental work that he's done, and a lot of these things that he's been working on were long before the MPA even started, and that he has continued to do and improve on some of these ideas, and uh, and I just am challenged and pleased by that, and hope that he'll continue to do that excellent type of experimental work that he's done. So I'd like to just bring up. My friend, and, uh, and I hope that you'll enjoy listening to uh, the John Chappelle lecture this year, Francisco Boone. Thank you, Greg. Just a little word about that first meeting. I remember at the end of the conference, we went in a little room to discuss some discrepancies about ether. Do you believe in the ether or not? Uh -huh. I mean, everybody says nothing, but when it came the turn of, of uh, Domina, she said, I don't use that word. This is a very isolated problem. Actually, what I've been working for years, for almost 30 years, is my experiment to be shown on the side. So that's really a continuous uh, life uh, enterprise. This is just something that occurred to me teaching astronomy, which I'm not an astronomer. I just read one chapter ahead of my students. <laughs> <laughs> my students are non-science majors, so no matter how, how ignorant I am, they're more ignorant. So. <laughs> if I write an equation on the board, they get horrified. <laughs> and teaching, okay, for four or five years now, it came to my mind, because I am a physicist, so I teach astronomy with a physicist's mind. How can we have a double shift of a absorption line? An absorption line is a dark line, it's no light. How can it shift in any way? And they were very much used. So this was the, the seed of this isolated problem. Um, I, I took this from the astronomy book. It's the same title again. And we're going to see some situations to, to understand this problem, which I hope you understand that it is a problem. And maybe my solution, you like it or not. Okay. So uh, let's keep going. Uh, one by one, background, problem, uh, elementary solution. This web one is one I found in the internet, one student asking about this. How can 